Where are Diddy's friends? I mean, he's Mr. Party Animal, Mr. Take That, Take That, Take That. Where's his friends? See, what good is having friends if they don't come through when you really need them? See, what good is having friends if you can't depend on them? And Diddy needs some support. He needs someone that he can depend on. Why aren't his friends coming through? I'll tell you, here's the thing. What good is having friends if they disappear and are silent when you need them to be visible and vocal? That's what friends are for, right? They come through for you. They support you at your times of need. What good is having friends if they don't benefit you, right? See, I guess you have to eventually ask yourself, do I really have friends? Diddy has to ask himself that question. I'll tell you what, Diddy, you have friends, but you have conditional friends. That means they're only friends to you once that condition that they're benefiting from, as long as that's being met. But once you cut off that condition, then you become an enemy oh in their eyes. And that's what God. I think, Diddy. I think you're too much of a risk, even for your friends right now at this time. Where are your friends? I'll tell you in a second. Stay tuned. Don't nobody go in the bathroom for about 35, 45 minutes. You know, fucked up, you know that, don't you? You got knocked the fuck out! What's up, man? I know I talk about karma and real life situations all the time in my videos, but I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> Diddy is experiencing the same karma, the same energy he puts into the universe. He's yes. experiencing it himself. It's unfortunate because it comes at the worst possible time. This is when someone is getting humbled. Diddy is being humbled right now. Hopefully, he's taking heed to some of these messages. But if he doesn't, it's only going to get worse. So here's yes. the thing. No one escapes life free. And what I mean by that is no one is able to lead this earth without being accountable for all your words, thoughts, and actions you put into the universe. The universe is a perfect system that God created to govern us perfectly. The universe is undefeated and it keeps a perfect score, yes. right? Now, I thought Diddy was the man, Mr. Party Animal, Mr. Take That, Take That, Take That. <laughs> Body. I'll tell you where they are. They are not saying anything because they don't want what's happening to Diddy to happen to them. See, the hard truth is this. Birds of a feather flock together. In fact, all of Diddy's friends probably partook or knew about what Diddy was involved with. All the orgies, illegal things, sexual assault, all that. But out of sight, out of mind. They didn't talk about it because they thought it would never impact them. Now, you bring Homeland Security in, you bring all these uh, uh, sexual assault allegations against Diddy, and then you talk about he had cameras up everywhere. Everybody's biting their nails. Everybody's panicking. You can hear crickets because they're wondering, am I on those tapes? And that's yes. where his friends are. They're out of sight, out of mind. Now, any of Diddy's friends know that, that associated with Diddy and Diddy's parties could be viewed as participants in any illegal activity. So any of his friends that come out and try to support Diddy, then if they go back to the tapes and see those friends, then they're basically making it worse on themselves. So in other words, anybody that comes out trying to support Diddy and trying to trying to uh, disclaim all of these lawsuits and help Diddy, they could themselves be incriminated if they're found on some of the videos that were recorded in Diddy's mansions. Because when Rodney Jones came out with the lawsuit, we'll discuss it in a second. He gave all it takes, but everybody discredited him. Who is Lil Rod? Who is this Rodney Jones dude? Well, now he's big baller on the block. Now his words seem a little more credible. But I got a question for you. Where are Diddy's friends? You the same things that make you laugh? are the same things that make you cry. Now, a lot of Diddy's associates are coming out well before these homeland uh, raids of his homes. They came out and was describing Diddy and they didn't think nothing of it. And this was some of the words that some of his close friends in his circle say, Diddy always put on crazy parties. <laughs> And 
which usually includes taking drugs, orgies, and acting out of character. Everyone's afraid because they're most likely caught on tape. Yes. That's what's happening? Everybody's on eggshells that that are associates or friends with Diddy because they don't know what they were doing, when they were doing it, and what was caught on tape over all these years. And in fact, when you're injected with drugs and all this, you're drinking and partying this, that, you don't even remember half oh of it. So most of Diddy's friends God. are saying, ho, 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 I'm not coming and partaking in this because I might be guilty, right? Now, in the Rodney Jones lawsuit filed against Diddy, he let the cat out the bag. Now, Rodney not only revealed that Diddy had hidden cameras all throughout his mansions, right? In Rodney Green's lawsuit, he also alleged that Diddy has sophisticated ways of drugging party goers without their knowledge or consent. You may ask yourself, how could that happen? Well, I explained to you because I've been doing my research. Diddy used to drug the alcohol and label certain bottles so they know not to drink it because this is what the poison is in. And then he got more sophisticated. He started drugging the juice, you know, uh, uh, gin and juice, orange juice, uh, uh, cranberry juice, soda. He started drugging that. Listen, this is crazy. And Rodney Jones talked about all of this in his lawsuit. Now, one source alleges that Diddy likes to control people and he likes to degrade. He likes people to degrade themselves. What does this sound like? Doesn't this sound like a narcissist? Yes. This sounds like a narcissist. Is Diddy a narcissist? Does his friends know that he has this psychosis going on? Question for you. Where are Diddy's friends? This is what I believe. I believe Diddy's friends initially had good intentions. I believe they were contemplating on how and when they would support Diddy. That is until Homeland Security and the Alphabet Boys and, and, and local authorities raided Diddy's mansions. That's when they go, ho, 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 pump your brakes. I'm sure that's what his friends said because we're not, you know, venturing into this when nothing good can come out of it and possibly incriminating ourselves. I'm sure that this is what his, you know, some of his friends were saying. So in Diddy's attorney, Aaron Dyer, he released a statement following the raids of Diddy's homes. Now, here's the thing. He's clearly trying to paint Diddy to be the victim. He clearly in this statement, and let me know what you think, he painted it out to be an ambush on Diddy, almost as if, woe is me, how could you do this to my client? He didn't deserve this kind of treatment. Now, Diddy's attorney, Aaron Dyer's statement reads as follows. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. The statement read, Mr. Combs never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their have their ability to travel been restricted in any way. So in other words, if Diddy's really supposed to be receiving, if he's worthy of this ridicule, of this ambush, why wasn't his uh tra his passport taken? Why is he still able to travel? Why wasn't he arrested? This is basically the argument that his, that his attorney Dyer is trying to put forth. But is it valid? Does it stick? He goes on to say, um, the under the, the unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Well, after Homeland Security came in, is it still meritless? Meritless? Is this still accusations out of left field? I don't think so. So there has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Yeah, there haven't been any civil um, rulings, but you did settle out of court for 30 large with Cassie. Doesn't that indirectly admit yes. guilt? At least I think so. So here's the thing. What's your thoughts? Because initially... His, Diddy and his attorneys were downplaying this. 
We're making Diddy out to be this victim. How could you ambush Diddy? Look at all he's doing. Look at how prestigious he is. Now what? Now what? Is it still madness? Question for you. Where are Diddy's friends? See, I'm talking about friends like Jay-Z, Jermaine Dupree. You know, because Jermaine Dupree, you was the person that worked it out with Diddy and, and sent Usher to live with Diddy while he was a young teenager. Now, Jermaine Dupree, if you knew any of these allegations, if they hold true and you knew this, shame on you. But you allow Usher, and again, Usher has a parent, so his parent had to consent as well, but they were, uh, uh, in a large part, relying on you, Jermaine Dupree and Diddy, to, to, to help raise Usher to, to be successful in the music industry. So Usher has been interviewed several times, and, and, and it's amazing, and let me know if you agree, but most of his comments when asked about his experience with living with Diddy and waking up, sleeping in the same bed, and fighting over cereal, that's what Diddy says, Usher always calms down. He always is patient. He always slows down his speech when talking about how, when he lived with Diddy, almost as if he's afraid of talking out of the narrative that the script that was already arranged. He says almost the same exact words each and every time he's asked about Diddy's home. Now, I'm not saying what he's saying is not true, but all I'm saying is that if it is true, you should be able to say it in different ways and you shouldn't have to be all careful and walking on eggshells as you say it. So Usher was interviewed back in 2016. Usher's interview, the first time he spoke about it, well, that we knew in the public was in 2016. He did an interview on a, the Howard Stern show. Now, Usher, um, when asked about his experience living with Diddy, Usher pauses and carefully chooses his words saying it was crazy. There were very curious things taking place and I didn't necessarily understand it. Very, very vague. What was curious that was taking place? He never discussed it. Never went into detail. Never elaborated. What was so crazy about it? Never talked about it. Maybe he signed a letter of consent, a gag order. Who knows? But he always pauses, always takes his time, walks on eggshells anytime he talks about his experience with living with Diddy. Now, what's ironic is that when Rodney Jones' initial lawsuit was filed, he accused Diddy of sex trafficking multiple women. And he also accused Diddy of having hidden cameras in several of his mansions. But Lil Rod was deemed money hungry, trying to get a big payday. Lil Rod seems very credible now after Homeland Security came with Applebat Boys and took some different things out of there, and we're still waiting to hear what was found. Now, the Jones allegations seemed far-fetched at first, and Diddy's attorney, Sean Holly, immediately fired back, trying to discredit Rodney Jones's claims. This is crazy. And you know my question that I keep asking? Where are his friends? They're hiding. They got too much to lose. So, attorney Sean Holly's statement read about uh, Rodney Jones. Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit, shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. Now, if these allegations hold true, you should be ashamed for, of yourself, uh, uh, attorney Holly, for saying this is an undeserved payday at some of the abuse, assault that he had to endure, some of the things that he witnessed, some of the traumatic experiences. For you to say this is an undeserved payday, if these allegations hold true, shame on you. She goes on to say his reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction, called all this fiction, doesn't seem real fiction now, seems non-fiction a bit, right? And simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to do, to join our headlines, basically. Basically, they're painting this out. Is Rodney Jones, Lil Rod, just want a payday and he want to get attention. He want the headlines. If these allegations hold true, then you should be ashamed of yourself for painting this man as, 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 as trying to get a payday um, and, and acting as if nothing happened to this man. You know, I wonder if you'll feel the same way after after they have a, a you know, court and, and they have a ruling and they have a jury and, and all the evidence is is disclosed. Um, here's the thing. It continues to rain on Diddy. Hopefully Fonsworth Bentley's umbrella is big enough to catch all that rain that's coming down on Diddy. On Diddy. Now, here's the thing. No one escapes life free. We all must account for all of our energy, all of our words, thoughts and actions that we put into the universe. 
So be careful in what you say. Be careful in what you do. Be careful in how you respond in situations. Be careful of the energy that you give out. But more importantly, be careful of the energy you take in. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please subscribe. Be blessed. More importantly, be great.